loudest introduction ever. Of course, if it's too old, if it's too loud, you're too old. Uh, <laughs> but of course, I'm here with my buddy Jay Lyston from Marvel Comics. Uh, Jay, thanks very much for joining this show. And uh, first and foremost, let's just talk comics, man. Let's talk how sure. uh, you know you fell in love with comic books. We'll get to how you got to working for Marvel and stuff like that, and everything that you've worked on. Because brother, you've worked on everything. Um, but tell me your background in terms of what made you fall in love with the medium of comic books? Um, so it's kind of a couple of things. Um, when I was 10, I moved to Colorado, actually, um, lived off Pico and, uh, we, you know, didn't have a whole lot going on. Like I had a skateboard and I had a bike and I had a lawnmower and that was pretty much it. Right. Okay. And, uh, so I would take my lawnmower money and buy some comic books because my dad was into comics and he was into sports cards. Um, so he got me into football and baseball and everything else, but he was also an artist. Like he did custom cars out there. Um, but wow. before that he was, he was an artist and was going to go to college to be an artist and, um, decided to get into custom cars instead. Um, so he always drew, my cousins always drew. Um, so I just kind of was following and behind them and drawing cars or like evil Knievel was one of my favorites as a kid, like just stuff like that. Oh yeah. And <clears throat> I remember seeing there was a Batman book that was like one of those record deals where you play the record while you read the book. I have a Conan one like that. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a Batman one versus Batman man bat, which was like a Neil Adams thing. And that was the first time I saw art that I was like, that's really good. Like it, it excited me. It like showed me something special. Right. Right. Um, but I kind of put it away. Like when I was about 13, um, moved back to Kentucky and got into a uh, musical arts school where we're, we performed music all day. Like that was, that was the thing, but attached to it was also a visual arts academy. And my next door neighbor was the lady who ran the visual arts academy. Um, and there was a couple of kids in her classes who also did comic books. So okay. I dug comics and she was telling me I was good enough to be in her art class. So I decided to like take all my regular classes by correspondence. And I spent all morning in the art school and all afternoon in the music school. Um, and met a few friends who were super into comics, like way more than I was at the time. Like I enjoyed them, but they were into it. Like they were studying anatomy and they were talking about Bart Sears. And right. Okay. Well, everyone about... goes to Bart Sears, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. right. You, want, you want some buff dudes? That's Bart <laughs> Sears. You go right, right. to it. And, and so I started learning about different artists, not just things that were kind of appealing to me, but like the guys who were good at something specific, like whether it was anatomy or a flashy style or you know, something else. Um, and I kind of started to gravitate towards the old EC comics, the, okay. the, the super realistic, like high render stuff. Um, and that kind of became my thing through high school and into college to the point where I kind of gave up on the music deal. Like I had a, a scholarship for music to, to go to a performing arts college and was like into it, but not enough to like keep my heart in it. Whereas when I was not in my music class, I was literally drawing all the time. So clearly that was the thing I was enjoying, not so much the music. Um, and around, it was 19 when I met Greg Land. Okay. I met, I met him then and I met another guy named uh, John. I'm going to blank on his name now. Um, he did Boof and the Bruise Crew for Todd McFarlane while we were in high school. He went to like a competing high school. And wow. So he was 18 years old and he's drawing for DC Comics on Robin and all this stuff. And did Boof and the Bruise Crew right as he left high school and skipped college. Just went straight to being a professional artist. Um, John Cleary. I knew I'd get it eventually. Okay. It well, and that was a good time to skip and go straight to art back then because woo. He, Prices yeah. were crazy in the 90s. Yeah. And I, I kind of like hit the wrong time period because like, all right, right around 1994 is when I graduated high school. 95, 96 was when I actually started getting some responses from publishers. Okay. Um, we were doing like indie comics with my buddies and, and putting stuff together and we would hustle at the shows at the table and like oh, yeah. take a portfolio everywhere and be like, oh yeah, I'm published. Here's my book. You know, you right. get started that way, right? Yeah. Um. And so I met Greg, who's actually kind of local to me, but I met him through conventions. Um, and he started kind of mentoring me. And we still work together to this day. So 
uh, obviously that that re- friendship worked out pretty well. Uh, but he taught me a lot about how the business worked because he had already been in graphic design and he was a professional artist who started doing comics. Okay. Just a different attitude. Um, and it just sort of kind of con- coincided with, I got good right around the same time the comics industry kind of took a dive. <laughs> <laughs> so I had like three years where I just couldn't get anything started. Um, and around 99 is when... Um, 98, I got offered an internship at Wildstorm and Top Cow. Okay. 1999, I took the internship at Top Cow um, and went out there uh, right at the end of the year uh, after having ghosted two books, one for DC and one for Marvel, uh, where another inker got credit, but because of the way things worked back then, they did the books in six months in advance. So all the credits were already set and that guy couldn't do it. So they just brought me in. I did it and he got credit. Uh, and it was the same guy for both books. Um, right, right. Um, More of a common practice great. back then, though, than it is now. Yeah. Like we had um, at Top Cow, there was like an assistant and intern program where you, you kind of work your way up. Um, you, you get assigned to somebody who's teaching you how to do something and you just kind of help them along until you reach that point where you're kind of at a level where you can just step onto your own train and take off, you know. Um. And so that, that process was actually really good for me because I got to learn different disciplines and different styles and everything else. Before you took the internship and in those three years, what kept you going? Because, you know, we're here, we're celebrating the launch of my company, Smoke yeah. Gun Comics. And I'm like 30 years late <laughs> because <laughs> I'll reach up right here. It's right next to my desk. This is my rejection letter from homage. <laughs> Uh, for a talent contest that they had, the guy who won this was J. Scott Campbell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who obviously should have won it because my stuff, and I've got some of my submission stuff up there, but like, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm totally not bitter. But when I got that letter, I was like, oh, okay. You know, and kept working at Target or whatever. So what was it for you that through those three years where it was kind of quiet for you, what kept you going? What kept you pushing for your dream? I think part of it was I had a network of people who were doing it. So like I had five or six friends who were breaking in and I had Greg who had like probably a five year career before I got my break. I had, you know, John who literally broke in in high school. It was like, okay, well, if, if that's possible, then clearly I can do this if I just keep at it. Um, and I'm, I'm a bit of a contrarian. Like I'm, I'm one of those people that like, uh, there's a, a fairly famous comic book artist who literally told me to give up. He was like, you are not going to make it like you suck. Wow. And, and I was like, all right, I'm going to show that dude. Like, okay, good. <laughs> good. Cause I was going to say like with your art and your detail, mm-hmm. cause like I, I, and stylistically I have some questions like who influenced you. Sure. Uh, but your detailed work, I mean, second to none brother. And I don't say that Thanks. just because you're my friend, but your work is some is work that I've always admired as a comic okay. book fan. So like, and I can't even remember how we connected. We connected through the Broncos. Yep. Everyone like football. Yay, football. We could talk about the Broncos if you want. Um, yep. But like when you reached out, I was like, oh, my God. And mm-hmm. you reached out. You're like, oh, my God. And it's like, yeah, we love comics and we love the Broncos and fantasy football and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, whoever that was, you don't have to name names. But like you did prove them wrong, brother. You did yeah. prove them wrong. Well, and, and he actually went to dinner like. Uh, probably 10 years after that. And I mentioned it and he goes, Oh, I'll tell everybody that it's like, it weeds out all the kids who aren't going to make it. Very like, good. All right. Fair enough. Hey, that's smart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, right. I don't know if you've ever heard stories about Neil Adams doing portfolio reviews. He's brutal. Yeah. I've heard it was brutal. Like nicest guy ever, but you take your portfolio to him, but Hey, that's Neil Adams. You know, that's yep. like top of the mountain. Yep, exactly. And, and that's the thing is like a friend of mine was actually, he, did, he does a reality TV production. And he was trying to convince Neil probably like seven years ago to start a TV show where literally he just destroys people. <laughs> and then it's like you spend like a half an hour talking to this person about, you know, how that, their right. dream is to do comics and everything. And right. at the end, it's like the panel of three on any other reality TV He'd show. Be like just Simon, Neil. though, you know what I mean? He's just right. like, it's no for me, dog. Although I guess that was Randy. But exactly. yeah, no, that would have been kind of cool, man. Yeah, he, he wouldn't go for it, though. Neil wouldn't, wouldn't do but, it. Then so like the brand of it. stylistically, who are your major influences and who is an underrated artist for me? Because you bring up Neil Adams and I'm a huge mm-hmm. Batman fan. Yeah. Um, Jim Aparo is my 
Batman artist. No yep. offense to Neil or anybody else that has worked on Batman, but Jim Aparo, like I just, mwah, I love everything that he's done, and he's never, n hardly ever talked about, really. Yeah, he, you know, like, and, um... and he's a, he's one of the underrated ones, but he's also like one of my big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, Flint Henry, who did Grim Jack. Yeah, um, he's really good. Yeah, not Henry Flint, but no. Flint, who's good as well, but Flint Henry. You know, with that different kind of monster, gory type of style, like so. Uh, and obviously, Todd McFarlane, my favorite artist of all time. Um, but who who are some of your influences as an artist? And you know, was there a kind of a pinch me moment where you got to work with this person? Didn't ever get to work with one of them, um, but like Al Williamson was probably the one that was the the like key influence in terms of like the way he inks and the way he draws so there's a lot of photo reference to it but there's also some cartooning and mm -hmm. and i think the thing that got lost on al over time was how good of an artist he was like some of the most famous ec stories are his and wally woods and both of those guys turned into inkers later on in their careers uh partially because of speed it just takes too long to draw like that um mm -hmm. so they, they they switched over um so i i first learned of al as a penciler with Frank Frazetta and they always they had their little team, you know? Um, and I just liked the fine lines that he would do with the brush. Um, and then later on, it was like in the eighties and early nineties, it became Mark Farmer because he was kind of the king of that, that, that thick brush style on right. Alan Davis and Dale Keown, the Dale Keown stuff with Mark Farmer and him is just perfect. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and then Will's Portacio. Uh, oh, I love of, Will's. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I got to ink him for three pages, and it was a kind of a bummer because it was one of those like, "Can you do this real fast?" I was like, <laughs> yeah, I can. I don't want yeah. to. I'd like to spend like a week on it, but right, I can't. right. And, and now I'm kind of like, I keep shooting him messages like, "Hey, let's let's do something together." Because that that was be like, if you're asking me like top ten people to work with in my life, I've already worked with him technically, but not the way I want to. Um, right. And he would be on there and like the Kubert brothers. Uh, I've gotten to work with Sylvester quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And he's certainly a huge influence in terms of the way he does things. Um, you know, very sort of kind of sexy way to draw, like without without being like gregariously so. It's it's very glamorous right. and like everybody's like they're so well, he is a rock just, star. Right. Yeah. Right. Sylvester's a rock star anyway, so that's just always been his style. Yeah. And, and it, it comes through, like his personality is right there on the page. And it's My crazy. first King Conan issue, I believe it's King Conan 13, I believe is his first cover. So I didn't yeah. know that. I just had the issue from when I was a kid because I love King Conan. Yeah. And then Conan the King around issue 20 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was going back through like Key Collector or something, looking at Mark Sylvester. I was like, wait, 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 King Conan 13? That's the... And, and that's I think that's his first cover. Don't quote me on that, but like mm -hmm. it was early Sylvester stuff, and it was awesome, of course. Yep, yeah, super good. I've got an original page from I think twenty two or twenty three somewhere around here of his. That's just gorgeous to look at. Yeah, um, um, I collect art a lot too, personally, because like one of the things I learned early on was um, as an artist, if you're looking at pages from the originals, you're seeing them full size and. Um, you get to see all the little mistakes and all the little tweaks that got made. Whereas in the printed version, you don't really get to see that. And it's, it's bizarre seeing like how much sometimes the people would go back in and make adjustments, you know, after the fact. Um, and that, that's where you learn a lot is seeing that stuff in person. Mm -hmm. He's Jay Lyston, Marvel comics. Uh, what's your favorite project that you've worked on? Uh, probably the death of Wolverine. Okay. Yeah, because that was that was one where it was it was like a call where they were like, "Hey, do you want to do this Wolverine book? What's it about? Who we're working with?" They're like, we can't tell you anything. You got to sign an NDA. I'm like, "Oh, then I know it's good." <laughs> okay, then you knew it was good. Yeah, and then the the one caveat with with Steve and I was like, we need as much time as we need. Like, it can't be rushed. It can't be, uh, "Hey, by the way, we're gonna need someone else to do five pages here." Like, none of that. We can do front to back every single page do it exactly the way we want to if we got to redo a page that's totally okay you guys are just gonna have to live with that like it might take us an extra week or two to get it done but it's gonna be good when we get done mm -hmm. and uh, they they went with that and uh, i think it shows in the end it turned out yeah, for sure fantastic project jay well i certainly appreciate your time before i let you out of here 
because I've already kept you longer than I said. Sorry. That's okay. um, uh, any advice for a young artist out there? Because it's it's so good. Like you have been so good to bounce ideas off of and just, you know, just be like, hey, I'm thinking of this or this. Uh, you've always been so encouraging to me mm -hmm. personally, not just as a friend or we love the Broncos or whatever. Um, but I've found that in this world, much like the football world, you know, there's a lot of good people. Adam Schefter is my mentor in the, the radio, you know, TV world that I'm in for my job of football. Right. Um, and, you know, Schefter, Mark Schlereth, Scott Hastings, they've all been huge influences on me from a media standpoint that have helped me get to where I've gotten to in the media world. And I've noticed that in the comic book world, you know, and obviously, there, you know, there's some bad people, whatever, but like, the good people are just so good. You know, they're just so giving, they're so kind. And, and um, there's a lot of young people out there that want to, I want to be a comic book artist. Okay. What do you tell the young comic? Do you tell them they suck? <laughs> uh, like, um, guy or, like what, what do you say? What's your best piece of advice for somebody? Cause creative people and uh, you know, we're just, we're just a different breed, right? Like we're just yeah. different uh, the way we're wired, but creative people, I, the spark of creativity and whatever happens with any of my comics and any of my projects and any of whatever TV shows or whatever movies they can be like, whatever happens, the spark of creating has just been so positive for me. Mm -hmm. So much fun for me. Like when you would spend all your days drawing. So what are your best piece of advice for a young person out there that wants to be a creative? I mean, the, the first thing is obviously do it, you know, just, accept that you're not going to draw well on day one, just do it anyway. Um, the best advice I had was have a sketchbook and constantly be working in it. Like, even if it's just today, I'm just drawing eyes in math class, whatever. It, it, you're still better at eyes by the end of the day. And hopefully you learn some math. Um, <laughs> and oh yeah, math. Uh, that's important. Um, the next best thing is really connections. You know, I, I got to where, I am because I connected with people. I asked the right questions. I listened, which is really hard <laughs> to hear someone say, you suck or this isn't very good. Maybe you should consider doing something else. And like, people are going to tell you that you have to have the confidence in yourself to do it for one. And then you have to have the understanding that more than likely they are trying to challenge you. They're not trying to squash you. Right. Um, right. So you got to take that energy and go, all right, well, you think I'm not good enough. Why am I not good enough? How can I be better? And then the next time you see that person, show them and remind them, hey, you said I needed to do this. I did it. What do you think now? How can I improve again? Because if they're willing to give you feedback, then you take all that in that you can and you just do it. Because in the end, if they see you doing that over and over, they're going to help you. You know, I've had probably five people that I mentored over the last 15 years that all broke in. Now, I probably had 12 people who I've mentored, but those were the ones that stuck to it. And every month when I would say, hey, have you done any samples this month? What do you got? They would always send me something or they would at least explain like, hey, my mom was in the hospital, whatever. I couldn't do it this month, but next month I got you. I was like, that's fine. Just double down. Right. You still owe me four from last month. Get those done and show me what you got. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And oh. like I was willing to move, like I moved all the way to LA from Kentucky to, to do this. If that's what it takes, do it. I'm not the only one that's done that. Lots of people do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, it's the generative principle. What I always tell people, I, I want to be in radio or podcasting or TV is good. Do it. Start a mm -hmm. podcast. You got StreamYard, right? Where's the logo up here? StreamYard, wherever it's at. Like, yep. yeah, it's free. <laughs> like start it, go straight yep. to YouTube or Twitter or whatever. But anyway. Jay, I've kept you so long. I appreciate you so much uh, and your friendship over the years. I appreciate you for jumping on board here as uh, we celebrate Smoke and Gun. And uh, right, just always look forward to your work. And uh, thanks for your time, man. No problem. I appreciate it.